After everything initializes and creates a map for you, if you launch in the editor for the very first time, you will be presented with four screens. To work in Chrome Editor, you only require to have one screen. And to have all four or two or three screens to be viewable at the same time takes away a lot of your resources. So right off the bat, you want to maximize one of your viewports. And you want to create for yourself a, a, a workable area where you have a perspective viewport and a plugin sidebar, which will change depending if you're work depending on what you're working with. Now, currently we are in a simple mode inside the editor, so there's a few ways to change to advanced mode. First, you go to view and switch to advanced mode. And another way is if you right-click on on the bar itself. It doesn't matter if you're clicking on the button, if you right click on here you are able to choose on advanced mode. And switching to advanced mode you're also able to switch back to simple mode with a click of a button. So let's cover some of the important functions inside the advanced mode and how to navigate inside the viewport. To navigate inside the viewport you have a few keys that you are able to use and look around. One, if you right click and hold on the mouse button you're able to look around. With the mouse wheel if you scroll up and down you will zoom in and zoom out. And if you click down on the mouse wheel or on the middle mouse button you will pan up and pan down, pan left and pan right. If you use the keys the up, down, left and right arrows move around inside your viewport. If you use the arrow keys and hold the right mouse button you're able to move around and look around at the same time. Another one you may want to take a look at is under tools you have shortcuts. So going under shortcuts you can take a look at all the keys that are bounded to your buttons and you're able to choose and you're able to change any of these. Going through and taking note on some of the hot, hot keys will speed up your workflow. Now let's talk about the interface. The first five have to deal with saving your level, creating your level, and opening. Also you have your auto save lock, which auto saves your map. And you can set in how many minutes it will back up and auto save your map by going to tools, options, and here you have auto save frequency in how many minutes it will auto save your map. If you want to disable the auto save lock function, you have to press it down. Once it's pressed down, it's disabled, it will not auto-save the map for you. The next one is playing your current level. Next we have rendering. This is a menu that you are able to switch on and off what objects are being rendered in your viewport. So uh, right now all I have is terrain and the player model. So if I click on wireframe, I'm able to see wireframe on the terrain and if I turn this off my terrain will disappear. Objects, etc. Then you have your objects, you have more options, post processes and so on. Next we have object list. This will list all the objects in your map. Then we have object properties attributes. So if I click on it nothing shows up but if I select an object and I click on it then the properties for that particular object show up. Then we have references, selections, then you have roads, and here this is where you, how you create roads. Also the roads tool is used to create water and rivers. Then you have brushes. With the brushes tool you're able to paint on your terrain with trees, rocks, uh, and different details. You can hide floating windows, you can hide selected objects, you can hide, hide unselected objects, you can un unhide selected objects and you can unhide all objects. Here these are the layers. This is where you can set different layers and you can turn them on and off. Then we have map settings which is a very important property here. In here you are able to select different map properties for your map. So going through here you have very detailed in-depth selection of your map. You can reset your terrain size, insert new terrain materials, under sky you're able to enable the sky, you change the time of day so if you didn't like the time of day you had before going back and taking a look here you're able to select a different time of day. Underwater here you enable the water. Under wireless 
you are able to change different atmospheric properties. You can reset your clouds, you can reset your cloud moving speed, and scrolling down here you can reset your grass, uh, lighting weather, color intensity, all the elements and properties of your map you're able to go through and it's very in-depth list so just going through and spend a little bit of time you can define a different set and create different way that your map is viewed depending on which settings you choose. Now one important thing to note that if you want to change any of the VAR list properties such as atmospheric clouds and all the other aspects of your map you have to remove the weather script that's attached to your map and the way you do that if you go under environment weather and daytime settings and here you'll have a script setting and you'll need to remove this completely so just highlight it get rid of it now you can change any of the properties and it will stay and affect your map come back up here we continue on you have your mesh browser which is our right hand bar right now so the next section we have, you can select the objects, then we can, we can lock our object selection, we can move objects, rotate objects, scale objects. Here you have different world coordinates, you, you can rotate and scale in world or you can do it in local. And you, here you can attach and detach from the hierarchy. So here in the bottom you have alignment tools and you have camera position tools. Here are your tools for navigating around in the viewport. You can pan, you can rotate, zoom in, in and out, but we already discussed that you can use your mouse and your arrow keys to navigate around the viewport. And here we have keep looking at selected objects and orbit camera current point. So if I select an object and I click on keep looking at selected object, no matter where I go look around, it'll snap back onto my select current object. So it could be very helpful. Then I have my distance tool so I just select my count distance between two points click and drag if you look down here where it says count distance you will see a number here and it'll tell you the distance between two points so if you click and drag and look down you can tell how many how big that distance is also another important thing to note that the distance here is counted in centimeters and 100 centimeters equals 1 meter and one meter equals to roughly 3.3 feet. So moving on we have our fight node generator tools. Here we have our movie animator tools. We also have Forester and Edit in Trees. So if I click on it, this is where our sidebar changes depending on the plugin that you're using. And here you're able to work with trees, able to edit trees. Another important function I have on my toolbar is the terrain, which is a very often used tool. So clicking on this, our sidebar changes. Here we have a terrain tool that we're able to start working with. And the rest, uh, we can refresh our file system, we can reload textures, material shaders, and etc. So if you change something and you loaded something in, you're able to refresh your file structure system. And the last thing I want to cover is viewport options. In the viewport, if you right mouse click on the gray bar right here, you have another set of options for your perspective viewport. And what I want to cover is store to and switch to locations. And these are very important. Is In the Chrome editor, the scenes get to be enormous size. And to be able to find your object that you're working with sometimes is very hard. So you can set different location points on your map and you can always come back to them. So if I like this location of my character being here and I'm working on something and I need to go across the map and work on something else and I need to come back right here, I don't want to be looking around my viewport and trying to find it. So I'm able to save this location of the camera where it's at. And the way you do that is if you like this particular viewpoint, just go right click, go to observer and you can store it. And you can also see there are, there are hotkeys. So control F1, it stores this particular viewpoint. So if I navigate around and I go somewhere else and I need to get back and I don't know where to go, I can right click and switch to location F1. Or again, the hotkey is Shift F1. So if I press Shift F1, I'm able to go back.